Hi, this is Lindworf playing games while rambling incoherently into a microphone. Why? Well, just because I can, and I continue with Tyranny Blind. Now, I want to talk to all of my companions, and seeing how extensive Versus dialogue was, it might very well take <laughs> an entire hour. So, <laughs> you know, let's get to it. Uh, I'll start with Verse, actually, uh, to make sure she does ha doesn't have any new dialogue. Mm, how did you how did you do that? Verse look at it, looks at you with a quizzical expression. Do what? Back in the Archon's war tent, you cast an edict as casually as reading a supply shipment. How did you do that? Well, I've done it before. You cast the edict of fire on the Vellum Citadel. I heard about it. How Kairos' anger raised a volcano from under the sage's own fortress. That was some impressive work. Mm, yep, that was me, alright. Well, call me impressed. C considering, what, uh, considering that you've read the words of Kairos more than once, I'm surprised you're even alive to tell it. Your vocal cords should have turned to ash by now. I'm not trying to make you feel uncomfortable, I'm just it's just worth recognizing what you've done. Not only are you Tunon's fate binder, you're the mouthpiece, mouthpiece of the Overlord. Gives me plenty of reason to stick around. You're going places, and I want to see where they lead. Uh, if you say so, I have some questions for you. What do you need? Okay, so that's pretty interesting, what she said, because she implies that uh, at least sometimes uh, proclaiming the edict is fatal to the one who reads it. I, I presume because of the amount of magical power um, sort of, mm, you know, contained in, in the edict. Um, that's pretty interesting. Um, okay, I can duel her. I, I guess I will try it, why not? You learned a thing or two about fighting in the Scarlet Chorus. Care to duel? That would be an understatement, and I thought you'd never ask. Since you're obviously at a huge disadvantage, I'll let you pick our weapon of choice. Uh, okay, so I can choose a bow or dual-wielding knives. To be honest, I doubt I will use any of those weapons anytime soon. Uh, sure, let's try knives. Like, sh she's going to trash me, most likely, but maybe I'll gain some some loyalty from her just by trying let's try dual wielding knives exotic good choice i'll leave you to guess which one is my dominant hand verse slashes and parries with an unrestrained ferocity at times it becomes difficult to follow her movements after taking more than a few cuts you learn to relax your eyes and better follow the subtle motion of her dance <sighs> You held your own. Call me impressed. Need anything else, or did I tire you out? I wanted to ask about, about our travels. What did you have in mind? What do you think of our present circumstances? Well, there's an edict hanging over our heads. As far as I'm concerned, the incompetence of the disfavored got us into this mess, and it will take the fury of the Scarlet Chorus to get us out. In other, in other words, nothing ever changes. What do you think of our travel companions? Anyone in particular? What do you think of Barrick? Well, uh, I'll give him some due credit. He's more complicated than he looks. He's still an intolerant and unapologetic bastard, but that's more his business than mine. What do you think of Lantry? I've been meaning to ask you about him. Lantry is talkative, reads when he isn't writing, and brings as much uh, to the battlefield as a sick bird. The warriors at your side shouldn't suffer from an elder's ache in their sword arm. Uh, you would be better served by putting him out of his misery. Uh, to be honest... I don't know if I like him, I don't know him. I've literally just met him. We, we need him for, for the time being. Uh, or, you know, at least he, he can be helpful, I imagine. He knows healing magic. Uh, we need him, and that's all that you need to know. Understood. You've got something in your mind you're using to, uh, him to accomplish. Then by all means, let him tag along, but don't expect me to keep him alive. If he's pulling his weight somehow, 
feel free to clue me in because I'm not seeing it. Um, okay. Go ahead, Fate Binder. She has nothing else to say. Uh, let's start talking with Barrick first. You look as if you have something on your mind. By all means. Uh, placing his weapon to his side, Barrick salutes you. The joints of his armor groan in protest. What can I do for you? Um, I'd like to know more about you. Um, I'm the line your enemies cannot cross. All the other details are meaning meaningless, but I suspect you have some thirsts for details. So ask, aw so ask away. Did you seek seek the tri trade of war, or did it find you? Both, I suppose. I knew fighting was in my blood, and the disfavored offered me a chance to use my skills to bring peace. Otherwise, I would have wound up some brigand or enforcer to a crooked merchant. Uh, Barrick taps his scabbard, looking away in thought. You think Asha and his legion bring peace? That's cute, but it doesn't hold water from where I'm standing, big guy. I've seen them spill as much blood as any chorus gang. You've clearly been too busy sacking villages and stealing crops to notice uh, how, a, how a proper army conducts a war. We saw order, not discord. Uh, well, yeah, to be honest, to be honest, I do agree with him. Like, obviously, obviously, you can't exactly, you know, the entirety of Kairos' empire, um, the, 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 they conquered the entire world by force. There's very little, very little peaceful about that. But compared to the Scarlet Chorus, the disfavored are practically saints. Um, Barik is right. The Scarlet Chorus is too chaotic to recognize order. I, I can see you're beginning to understand. The Chorus is a useful tool to throw at one's enemy, but it grows brittle with age and is soon replaced. The disfavored needed recruits in anticipation of the march south. They offered to care for my mother and brother as long as I stayed with the Legion, which is a better guarantee than you'll find anywhere else. I was an elite fighter as far as uh, more uh, as far as most were concerned. Though still a green, uh, though still green by disfavored standards, luckily, luckily for everyone, my skills improved under the Iron Marshal's rigorous training. Uh, tell me about your name. Uh, Barik is a shortening of my northern surname, which has been passed down through generations since Graven Asher as assembled his army. I go, uh, I'll go, I go by it because I wear it with pride. The proper form is Barikonen. Um, beyond its age and association with the General's Legion, the name of Barikonen has no great titles of asso or associations. I hold no claim to a great house or legacy, save for the disfavored. They are all the kin I need. What's the story with your armor? It is a symbol of Kairos's will, one that I am not likely to forget. I found this armor. Perhaps it would be better to say that it found me during the Edict of Storms. What happened during the Edict of Storms? We heard that Kairos would proclaim the Edict, uh, so we, we rushed into the field to battle the forces of Stalwart. I was shoulder to shoulder with some of the mo Legion's most decorated veterans, and my pride blinded me to the danger. Our march was a hasty one. A cohort of the disfavored soldiers vanished uh, um, in the second year of the war, amongst them the daughter of Graven Asher, after a long silence, we learned that she was being held in a fortress of Sentinel Stand. As we surrounded the citadel, I heard the opening peals of thunder, as did the scout I was busy trying to kill. Uh, then the winds hit like an avalanche. Many of us begged Kairos for deliverance. What else were we to do? The winds knocked the legs out of our offensive from under us. Uh, mm, all the decorated soldiers I brought to the battle were swept and dashed to pieces, their armor and bodies mixing with the dirt of a tornado that span in, a mad in maddening revolutions. Mm, the damn thing chooses... What? Damn thing chooses to that moment to go dry, and with so few survivors to recount the edict, bah. Uh, Lantry... Uh, Lantry shakes his quill and presses it harder against the scrap of parchment, imploring it to write. 
<laughs> okay, so he's trying to chronicle the, the what uh, what Barrick is telling him about the edict's effects. But by the way, I, I find it to be pretty endearing that he's imploring uh, his quill to write because that's something that I've been doing as well. Although mostly when I was a kid, I used to talk to my computer. Like I used to, uh, you know, implore it to work better. For example, when I was installing a game uh, and I had like a scratched disk or something, I would also always beg my computer to, to work, you know, to read it. Sometimes I even did things like, you know, looking away from the progress bar uh, of the installation so that the computer doesn't get shy. Mm, a piece of the citadel wall broke off and nearly crushed my skull. I only remembered a few scattered moments from that storm, like the flying bits of bronze and iron cutting my flesh, the severed limbs of fallen soldiers tumbling through the air. Eventually I woke up, uh, thinking myself trapped under the rubble, when I rose and felt like I was like I was buckling under my own weight. Uh, that's when I realized I was stuck, right and truly stuck inside this heap of scrap. What happened to Ash's daughter after the edict hit? Uh, she, she was trapped behind the wall of Sentinel Stand, imprisoned by Kairos' storm, as well as the fortress itself. A thousand soldiers standing shoulder to shoulder could not have endured those winds to rescue her. Uh, wait, but like, what well, does that imply that she was captive by the? Like, I don't quite get it. Or, or did she die? Mm. How, how did you survive when everyone fell? It is a mystery to me as well. Did Kairos he hear my plea for mercy? Did, he, did this heap of scrap metal protect me, imprison me, punish me? He wraps the back of his helmet with a gauntleted hand, a pantomime of gesture, of a gesture his armor prohibits. I don't have enough fingers or toes to count the possible reasons, so I try not to dwell on them. Uh, are you genuinely stuck in there? Have you tried taking it off? Uh, I've made attempts in the past, even had one of the beast haulers uh, pull, pull on the helmet with another, while another pulled on my boots. The men in the phalanx have taken great pleasure in trying to find ways to liberate me. In time, I grew weary of the struggle. Sometimes I fear that removing the armor would be to question Kairos' judgment and risk a more odious curse. Looks like pretty solid protection. That would be an understatement. If only it protected me from the foolish questions. Barrick regards you in such a way that you can't that you can tell he's ro rolling his eyes. A forlorn sigh escapes his helmet. Mm, do you handle your own repairs? I try to keep the surface oiled to slow the spreading of rust, and I bend the plates from time to time. But repairs, maintenance, no. If you have any idea on how to better maintain this situation, I'm open to discussing them. Uh, to, to be honest, that makes me question whether, like, I, I assume I cannot switch his armor, right? I, I have to look into his inventory and test it. Mm, back to my questions about you. By all means, Fatebinder. As with all of the disfavored, I assume you grew up in the Northern Empire. That's right. I grew up in Battle's Rest, then trained at Fort Resolution before they marched me out to support the second cohort. I hope to spend my uh, rusting years in threatened shores, unless of course I die in glorious battle, which would be preferable. My mother is good with the soil, my father with rings. He spends much, much of his time away on, on one merchant's errand or another. Still, I am lucky to say they are both alive. Let us speak of something else. As you like. Uh, hmm, would you like to discuss removing your armor? He looks at you for a very long time, his expression as unreadable as ever. Though we are encouraged to couple and mate within the Legion, I don't consider you one of my cohorts. I think I'll decline. Uh, well, first of all, I'm not quite sure you're even aware how mating works because you know I, I hate to break it to you but we're both men it wouldn't you know 
I, I'm not saying things couldn't be fun, but no actual mating would be possible. Uh, just out of curiosity, would the answer be different if I was disfavored? I don't know how long you've harbored these thoughts, but I would strike them from your imagination. I won't be leaving this armor anytime soon, and you have no hopes of breaching it without capable tools and endless patience. Suffice it to say, my armor and I will not be separated for the time being. When the war is over, perhaps Tunan will lend me one of his forge bound. Until then, here I remain. My armor saved me from the destruction of Stalwart, where thousands of others lost their lives. So you can see why I continue to wear it. For the time being, we will not be separated. Are you comfortable in there? Probably not. It has pieces of shit stuck into it. Mm, I have somehow developed enough calluses that I can sleep at night, but I wouldn't call that comfort, would you? This is, this is my armor. It has everything it needs and more. Purpose, meaning, strength. If it were comfortable, that would only take away from its other qualities. Do you even want it removed? I would not speak of it now, Fatebinder. Please, consider this topic closed. Oh. Damn it, I didn't want to do it, do it actually. Mm. I didn't want to do it. That's that's pretty rude. Uh, I I misclicked one of the number keys. Uh. Mm. You certainly. I, I'm not going to reload to go through all of the other options because that would be pretty annoying. You certainly know how to throw your authority around when you need it. Uh, that's your right as the fate binder of Tunon, but very well if you insist. Barrick rises to his full height and regards you with an impassive coldness. Be sure to take the fate uh, tell the Fatebinder everything, you ironclad heap. Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't want a negative report sent to your beloved general, would you? And you will be silent, Barrick hisses, and the, s the sound like steam escaping from his plates. Uh, challenges his betters and yells at women. Be sure to include that in your report, Fatebinder. Verse turn, turns to you, wearing a smug smile. Barrick says nothing for a time, his chest rising and falling in, an, in erratic breaths as he struggles to equalize. Then he increases, uh, releases a deep, a, a deep exhalation and continues. I don't need to tell you that this suit of junk is a literal pain in my ass, half broken, smelling of midden, and per perpetually jabbing with uh, my side with some Kairos be damned caltrop. These dusty plates may not be up to standard, but they serve to disfavor well enough on the battlefield, if only to intimidate the enemy. Better for me to endure this condition than to shirk an advantage. Considering that I wore this as I marched across the bones of Stalwart, uh, that, was, that was my burden growing heavier with every step, I have no desire to leave it behind. It's a lesson, a reminder, and yes, a prison, but all of those things make it something more. It's an armor fastened in ideas, Lantry matters to himself soberly and commits a few words to his manuscript. These plates have something of me in them. They are as wicked as a, as a bramble patch, as stubborn as a fortress, and as hopelessly flawed. At present, removing my armor is not an option. If that ever changes, I suspect that tears will tremble with the impact of my collapsed fortification. What a day will that be? What does Graven Asher think of your predicament? I suspect that he doesn't. Not to besmirch the great general, he has larger matters to consider than any one soldier's woes. He sh his shrug sends a poof of debris clattering to the ground. Uh, how long do you think it can last? Uh, this armor hasn't shown any sign of weakening, and my maintenance regimen is all that keeps it from rusting solid. Um... Were I, stop to applying oil, were I to stop applying oil and give it to entropy, the shell would harden to a degree that no forge master have, has ever seen. I think it could very well stand for as long as the old walls, with my skeleton peering out from the depths, and someday not even that. Now isn't that a cheery thought? What? 
I also not sure if Barrick knows how rust works. Because if it rusted solid, like all the way through, it will event it would eventually crumble. Like uh, he seems to think that the rusted metal is stronger than not rusted metal, but obviously if that was true, everybody would have their weapons rust. Like, why does he think people want to stop that? If not to stop the decay of the metal. Mm, let us talk about you can, what you can and can't do. <laughs> that is should sure to be fun. That's kind of an invasive question, to be honest. I can strike fear into the hearts of our enemies and protect a shield wall with my very body. What more do I need? <laughs> How do you vacate your bowels? Yeah, it's pretty pre pretty apparent. He shits his pants. Um, let us say, let I say, manage and manage poorly. That part, that uh, the parts of the misbegotten thing I can reach, are in better repairs than the others I can't. How do you take pleasure from la from life? That's a that's a that's a question. You know, th th this interrogation is a little unkind, but the the the, the fun potential is just too great for me to ignore. Um, so how do you pl take pleasure from life? Mm, are we actually talking about this fate binder? Do you have nothing better to do than I, than wonder how I access access my nether regions for a frenzied bout of self interest? I don't want to hear this. How do I even run far enough to avoid it? Reverse flexes her ears and winces at the inevitable. Well, I can't, and not for the lack of trying. My works are inaccess inaccessible from the outside, and as much as I've tried to warm my arm uh, out of the sleeve of iron, I would only succeed in dislocating my shoulder. Mm. If you ever think me frustrated or disagreeable, just imagine what I've dealt with since, since, the, since the third year of conquest, or more accurately, what I haven't dealt with. Okay, uh, you know, d d d d depending on h how high of a lib li libido he has, that, that also has potential to be pretty frustrating, but I would say the constant need to shit your pants and piss yourself uh, is a far greater um, sort of it's a far greater imposition on your life. Um, how do you fare in water? How do you think? That's a very stupid question, but I am going to ask it specifically for that reason. Uh, better to ask how do I sink? The answer is quickly. Water passes my lips easily enough. Though I take great great care to keep it from anywhere else. Back to my other questions. Go on then. I'm only getting rustier standing here, entertaining your curiosity. Let's talk about something else. Mm, tell me about the disfavored. We are the Iron Legion, the warrior elite of Kairos' fighting force. I could easily lose the count of hours extolling our glories. What is it you would like to know? Have you fought in any notable battles? I've ser served in Stalwart for the better part of the year, faced the enemy everywhere from the Coral Run to Sentinel Stand. I lost count of the battles. Seems like we fought every other day. A sigh echo echoes in the cavern of his helm. Some of our best histories took, took place there, fighting an enemy worthy of our iron, but we were not successful enough to please the Overlord, and the final intervention was harsh on us all. Barik take, take, takes a deep breath, his arms folding as his posture stiffens. Mm, I had an unusual view of the Edict of Storms. Kairos' judgment, judgment left, left its mark on me, yet considering how we fought at Stalward with the skill and honor of legend, only the Edict is remembered. A shame. Uh, tell me about Graven Asher. Graven Asher is the general of the Disfavored, a veteran of centuries of battle and an Archon without peer. I would follow him into the void and back without question. Barik swings his arm in a salute. How did he come to serve Kairos? Before uniting the Northern Empire, Graven Asher served as a warlord in the service of one of the local kings that defied Kairos' rule. Incredible as it might seem, uh, Asher stood against Kairos' rule. 
uh, though his army was dismantled by Kairos' overwhelming numbers, uh, Ash's forces uh, performed admirably. It was said that he and his troops claimed 77 lives for each one of their own. Kairos took an interest in the military genius that bloodied his, his army. Graven Asher was summoned to a conclave of Archons, and though he was sent in chains, he left as an Archon, having, having been granted a position of power in Kairos' great host of war. Thus the disfavored were born. All of us trace our line back to those warriors that impressed Kairos with their will and tenacity. The only difference is now we fight on the winning side. Though the, though the general s seldom speaks of it, I know that Asher humbled himself in order to spare, spare his troops the, burnt, uh, the brunt of Kairos' punishment. His loyalty to the old blood of the north is beyond question. Um, um, yeah, I think he did make a right choice to save his troops. Because, to be honest, like... At a certain point, what can you even do against an overwhelming force? Uh, like, it wouldn't really serve them that well if they all got killed for, for a cause that was lost. Whereas, because he uh, submitted, he lived, and they lived as well. And it doesn't mean, you know, theoretically, I, I, I doubt it, it is going to happen. They seem to have drunk Kairos' Kool-Aid you know, pretty hard, uh, but theoretically they could still rebel again uh, because they are still alive. If they all died, they couldn't, but you know, uh, he made the right choice to save his troops. And he would make it again to save any of us. There has never been a more devoted and attentive leader. Uh, Barik makes a proud, f pr proud fist and steps to a salute with a forceful chatter of pots and pans. What else do you know about his past? I follow him into battle, I am not his personal scribe, and if I did know more of him, it would not be my place to say. Barik takes a half step back, folding his arms across his chest. As an Archon, what magic does he wield? Uh, Asher works his magic through us, his soldiers. When we do battle, uh, Asha seems to know the events even before our runners give, have given word. Most importantly, he protects us. It's a bit tricky to explain, unless you've experienced it. I can think of countless, countless times when I've been struck by a spear, or hit with an axe, uh, or even run through with an arrow, and each, in each of those moments, the pain and injury just, just ceased to be. None of us knows how he d know how he does it, or how he can sense that we're in danger and intervene from afar, but I suppose that's why he's an Archon. What he does probably wouldn't make sense to someone like me. How do you feel about Graven Asher? How do I feel about him? Archon Asher is the bravest, warmest, most compassionate, gen compassionate general who has ever lived. He's a living, living icon of leadership and courage. Barik til tilts his head slightly to the side, as far as his suit's limited range of movement permits. Asha is a soldier, but he doesn't kill for sport. A leader, but he doesn't issue commands that to hear himself talk. He demands discipline and sober conduct of his troops, and I apl applaud such, such standards. Mm, back to my questions about the disfavored. Go on, I'm listening. Uh, what can you tell me of your time in the Legion? I joined the Legion three years before the conquest of the Tears began. Uh, though handy with a few weapons, I, my size made me the perfect addition to a phalanx. I've served with the stone shields ever since. Proud to say I stood in front, f front row, right corner in over a dozen battles. That has been my place ever since the Iron Marshal gave me the assignment. Uh, uh, to be honest, you know, I have never thought about it, but, but now, when I think about it, the corners of, of a battle line are possibly maybe more important than, uh, than the actual middle. Because, uh, you know, if your corner breaks, uh, your enemy can flank you. Um, so, w whereas if your middle were to break, it would still make little sense for the enemy to go 
right into the middle of your formation because then the soldiers on the side c could just encircle them. That's not a good position to be in. Um, the Bastard City, the Gates of Judgment, Vendrin Pass, Ocon's Ring, a quick tour in the Barris in Chains and then Stalward. I spent a long time in Stalward, lost a lot of friends there. What, have, what about the other disfavored lieutenants? They are Graven Ashes' more tr most trusted officers and warriors from the Iron Guard. Between Ashes' arcane powers of command and his cadre of gifted leaders, there is little confusion or chaos in our ranks. Tell me of the one they call the Iron Marshal. She, she takes it upon herself to train and harden our green recruits. Not only that, she has a keen eye for talent and how to foster it for leadership. She is the youngest member of the Iron Guard. Her family line served the disfavored back before Asha bowed out to Kairos. Say what you will of how many, uh, how many seasons she's weathered. Her lineage is impressive beyond measure. What of Cairn's disciple, Radix? An Earthshaker who swore service to Cairn a few years before the conquest. Since Cairn is gone, the cult now follows Radix. Unlike his Archon, at least he knows how to follow orders. To his credit, Radix seems to appreciate the honor of fighting alongside the disfavored. Cairn was always peeved to be, to be, inv to be invited in the glory. The mages seem a necessary, necessary complication. They are insubordinate and can la can't lack their own supplies, but I wouldn't want to go to war without their spells and of tremor and leaping stones. What about the scoutmaster, Marik? Uh, Marik is a devoted leader, and Asher seems to hold his council in high regard. Both, uh, both, se both set their troops ahead of themselves, which I'm sure is why they work so well together. He's no magician, but he does share a special connection to his warband, and they are entrusted with the most important scouting assignments. They say he can see what his scouts see, and hear what they hear. What about the veteran warrior, Varimas? He is the finest of us, second only to Asher. Varimas is an Evocatus, a soldier who, who has lived to see the end of his, of his term of service. It's rare for anyone to survive that long, much less willingly, willingly return. These days he lends his tactical expertise to Graven, Graven Asher, though by all rights he should be enjoying his twilight years in a seat of, seat of honor and dignity. Back to my other questions. Why didn't the Legion prevent the uprising of Vendrin's well? I think that's the question you ought to you ought to ask the Scarlet Chorus. They too were charged with ensuring the locals remained vanquished and unarmed. Barrick lurches forward as he speaks, iron plates grinding under his motion. Uh... I don't like this option. I would have liked an option where I'd, I say it's both of their faults. Because to be honest, I, I, I said it a number of times, but it's no less true. In fact, it becomes more true with every passing moment. As cool as the disfavored are, the rivalry with the chorus, it's, it's remarkably childish. Uh, you know the way they they bicker and grow uh, like offended at, at each other and pick up their toys and leave the battlefield literally because they disagree with something the other side has done. Um, I would say the Vendran Guard are really on the guilt uh, are really the only guilty party. It was their rebellion after all. Mm, that is a supposition unworthy of you, Fatebinder. The tears are but are but children before Kairos. We don't blame, the f blame them for their ignorance, but the responsibility to set them straight is ours alone. Well, in that case, you should accept the disfavored part of the blame, rather than try to shift it all to the Scarlet, Scarlet Chorus. Like, I, I kind of disagree with that. And what more, more can you tell me of the Legion? And the disfavored accept only finest warriors. We are all volunteers and soldiers by trade, not farmers or fishmongers pressed into service. Uh, there is a century of tradition, honor, and tactical mastery in our ranks. We don't let just anyone into the Legion. 
Only Northmen of character and prowess are welcome. Um, what if a what if a capable tiersman wished to join? We we would not recruit even a champion of the tiersmen. Each soldier in the legion is tied by blood and fealty to those that stood with Graven Asher during the coming of Kairos. That is a part of who we are, and that will never change. So why is the legion called the disfavored? Uh, it is a name born in shame, now, wor now worn in honor. After Graven Asher stood against Kairos, his forces, he was forced to give up much, his allegiance, his pride, in the name of his wanted army. What was the legion originally called? The name has been forgotten by all, save Asha and Kairos, and it is considered bad form to bring up, bring up the topic. Since you didn't, didn't, didn't know any better, I'll say this much. Disfavored is the only name by, wi by which one needs to know us. Now let's speak of something else. Um, go back to my previous questions. I have some questions about the Scarlet Chorus. Our, uh, our allies do not share the disfavored sense of honor and discipline. The Chorus will trust any criminal, rapist of, or half-wit uh, with a truncheon or blade. Uh, what would you like to know? What do you know about Voices of Nerad? The Archon of Secrets? All I know are rumors, hearsay, speculation, but, there's, uh, but, but that's as much as anyone knows of the Voices. Some accounts tell that he's actually dead, and the Overlord has trapped the minds of his foes in the same body to torture them all, as likely as an explanation as I've heard. In truth, I know little of the Voices, and have reason to suspect almost anything about him could be true. You could tell me his tears turned cheese back into milk, and it would seem more sensible to believe, to believe you than not. Do you know anything about his powers? I am no scholar of sorcery, but as I understand it, the Voices of Narat is a thief of minds. They say, he, they say he can swipe your thoughts and make them his own. I don't know how it works. When I recruited into the Disfavored, the Iron Marshal told me never to take audience with the Voices if they, I didn't have a witness on hand. Uh, do you think him disloyal? I really shouldn't comment on, su on such matters. Uh, Barik looks looks ahead blankly and clears his throat. I've heard his tears can che can turn cheese into milk. <laughs> okay, I I am I will do it. Like I I think he will catch on that it's a joke because he literally just said it himself. But if he doesn't, that might be funny on its own. <laughs> That's very amusing, Fatebinder. Yeah, he, he caught on and he liked it. Mm, what do you know of his associate, the Archon Sirin? Uh, Sirin is the Archon of Song, and one of the youngest of her rank. She can influence human emotions with her voice alone. The voices might be the conductor of the chorus, but I would say Sirin is their best weapon. The voices put her talent to good use. He had her singing a song uh, up and down the coast, and the tearsmen defected to the chorus in droves. Uh, what can you tell me about their troops and tactics? Tactics? Uh, these are the first I've heard of them. The Chorus is more of an irregular mob than a proper army. Still, it's a well-armed mob, and they even have a few, few proper warriors and magicians in their pitif pitiful excuse for ranks. What do you know of their warriors? Most Chorus rats are untrained peasants, hunted a knife or pitchfork. It doesn't take much to qualify you for the front lines. One only needs a beating heart, and even then the chorus could make do. Of course, not everyone in the chorus is an infirm child or a sick old crone. Some ex-soldiers and madmen join, and the fighting elite of the chorus form a clique known as the Scarlet Furies. Varric is too dismissive by far, but he's right that most recruits are novices pressed into service. Most will not survive their few few. few first battles. Uh, those who live will have experience to lead, and those who fall can easily be replaced. What sort of magic does the Chorus use? The Blood Chanters are the mages uh, who follow the voices of Nerat. Like the Chorus itself, the Order is not steeped in tradition and antiquity, uh, rather it's built on knowledge stolen from other guilds. The Fire Magic 
er, uh, earns them a place on the battlefield, but they have chants that they also have chants that stir the mind and the heart. The motherless sods have spells that can bolster a man's carriage or tap into his fears. If the chorus is a mob, how is it led and supplied? The voices of Narat gives orders to his elite commanders, who in turn send instructions to the gang captains, but beneath that hierarchy it is chaos. Whole gangs will break from the larger force and disperse back into their homelands. The chorus is inefficient beyond words, and yet more bodies can keep coming to replace those lost in the mess. Uh, inefficient? Every weakling lost in the shuffle is one less burden to those in the choir, uh, still dancing to the song of battle. Our ways must be harsh, otherwise the stupid and the soft will inherit the chant. The chorus has a lot of mouths to feed, so the conscripts, conscripts that can and won't fight are made to gather food and water, else, I'm told, they are fed to the pigs, becoming food and water in a sense. He shrugs. Um, a fine contrast to the honor, efficiency and decency of the disfavored, a legion demands carriage and tenacity, but provides, to, provides us with good iron and does not leave soldiers to forage like vultures. Um, uh, how do you think the Scarlet Chorus convinced so many tearsmen to join? Um, it began with Sirin, she had a song that got whole villages marching to her will, and once those peasants killed their neighbors and cousins in the service of the voices, it either hardened them into warriors or break the, broke their minds for servitude. Lots of criminals and drifters joined the chorus too. It seems like the scum of the tears just needs the promise of glory and sanctioned debauchery to turn on the, their neighbors. It's not pretty, it's not pretty and it shouldn't be. The chorus is a forge, all the dirt of the tears goes in, and the finest bits are refined into weapons. There are many that join the Scarlet Chorus because they wish to join the winning side. It's a shame that such patriots were not born to proper northern stock, too weak or too slight to be disfavored. The Scarlet Chorus uh, is their best freedom from the fealty to the younger realms. Not everyone has the f fortune of gaining Tunon's favor. Uh, I actually agree with this. He's not going to like it, but I agree with this. I th This is one of my major points of contention with uh, the disfavored, is that they are xenophobic and uh, that they are very restrictive in how, you know, ultimately, we are all men. I'm pretty sure there are people in the tiers that would be uh, disciplined enough and brave enough and skilled enough to to be able to work uh, as a part of the disfavored. Uh, they, they just wouldn't accept them on principle. The disfavored turn away all of the people of the tiers that seems selective to the point of foolishness. I wouldn't expect the Fatebinder of Tunon to grasp the notions of pedigree and standards. The disfavored are a family, not some military orphanage or home of second chances. Enough about the Scarlet Chorus. Good. Let's move on to another matter. What can you tell me of the tears? Uphill. Uh, uphill both ways and full of damn sods. I've learned some history in training and I've been here for a few years, but I'm no expert. What is your assessment of the local forces? Uh, there was a time early in the war when I would have feared the younger realms working together. Imagine that, he chuckles. Once I saw uh, the modest scope of their defenses, I knew that they would be easily outclassed. They couldn't even rally their best to make a, compet a, a competent stand. Tell me of the Vendrian Guard. Once they used to be the Queen's Royal Arm Army of Vendrian, I guess defeat inclined them, inclined them to shorter name. Uh, we crushed them back in 429. I'm pri proud to say I took part in the decisive battle. You know the rest. A year after we thought them conquered, 
Thousands of Vendran Oathbreakers murdered the garrison and declared themselves free of the Overlord's rule. Tell me about the Unbroken. The Unbroken Legion was an accomplished army of the realm of Stalward. Citing their victories as evidence of skill, they prided themselves on, on never facing defeat when fighting on home soil. After the Edict of Storm tore apart Stalward and twisted it into the Blade Grave, barely a twentieth of the Unbroken's former strength survived to continue the war against Kairos. The unbroken union of Stalward made a rot in the decrepitude of their fallen realm. He squeezes his gauntlet into a hard fist. Much as it pains me to admit, in all of the realms of the Tears, the unbroken have been the only worthy foe to meet the disfavored in battle. The unbroken value tradition, just as we do. Stalward has never won a war on their own soil, a reputation they take quite seriously. It's fortunate that Stalward has poor relations with its neighbors. The rest of the tears will not come to their aid, so as bravely as they are fight, their end is inevitable. What can you tell me of the Bronze Brotherhood? The Bronze Brotherhood is a mercenary company from the Free Cities uh, dotting the Tears' southern coast. Many of these mercenary companies were employed by Kairos' agent, uh, uh, agents and slaughtered during the war. The Bronze Brotherhood survived thanks to their relatively safe posting at Lethian's Crossing, where the Voices of Narath hired the company to help protect the town's forge operation. Uh, among the most trained and dedicated warriors of the Tears, the Bronze Brotherhood have a reputation for ruthlessness and tenacity. Aggression and decisive thinking are so highly prized by the Brotherhood that the violent enigmatic Scourge is the group's mascot, a creature most decent folk consider the staff of nightmares. The term brother is used for mercenaries of bo both genders, as the company's title har harkens back to archaic notion of living as men. Uh, in Tears custom, this amounts to releasing all claims to lands. To better assure the employers uh, that the Brotherhood won't, won't covet the realms they are paid to protect. Mm, mercenaries from the Free Cities. The Chorus needed extra muscle, and you can always mint new rings. Hard to believe the Tearsmen turned on each other for mere, for mere loops of metal. The Bronze Brotherhood worships the Scourges, yes, those mon monsters from the Old Wolves. The mercenaries are grown adults that willingly admire a magical abomination. Read, in read into that what you will. Now, the, the game has been a little tight-lipped, as of yet about, you know, those old walls and spires, uh, other than they, they are mm, sort of mysterious magical terrain that people, that is shrouded in superstition. Uh, so, so I'm pretty sure it's going to play a, a role in the game, especially because the, the, the Citadel, you know, Ascension Hall that we're trying to take, uh, it lies uh, in the shadow of one of, the, one of those spires. Uh, that said, it should surprise no one that the Bronze Brotherhood eventually wanted more than just rings and turned under contract. Kairos now considers them, them an enemy, which is for the best. The Overlord needs a better class of combatants. Go on, Fatebinder. Mm, what do you know of the Younger Realms? Before we marched on the Bastard Tear, I recall Graven Asher giving us a speech as we stood assembled at Fort Resolution. He, to he told us that the Younger Realms lack the sense to make a stand against us. I don't think I need to point out that the average Tearsman is just plainly inferior to the sons and daughters of the North. For every one of ours they kill, we must drag a score and a half bleeding into the soil with us. It didn't help that they are afraid of magic and relied on their battlefield prowess to stage a defense. What do you know of the Beastmen? Uh, they drilled us on the Beastmen uh, combat before the invasion, but it did, it did little to protect us. Uh, the local savages are lacking in brains, uh, hygiene and the ability to arm themselves, uh, yet the prime hun hunters of their species are formidable. Aside from being rapacious killers, the, 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 the Beastmen make good haulers and laborers uh, once you've killed the half that won't follow orders. 
Mm, you seem like more than capable fighter. I've trained with the spear and shield in my youth, but I gave it up the day I earned this favored iron. I can still throw with some accuracy, but it's a challenge these days. He knocks twice on his helmet. Why? Are you interested in a sparring session? Um, I heard rumor that Asha has an unbeatable sword fighting technique. Mm, you flatter the Legion's reputation, but the Archon, but the Archon does make sure that we are a competent swordsman. Observe. Uh, Barik takes up a sword and offers several practice jabs, testing its weight and balance. Before you know what to expect, the gleaming of iron whips through the air fast enough to shut for a sharp breeze to disturb the air, Barak does that several more times, never showing any signs of exhaustion. What is it you have on your mind? Uh, well, what do you think of our circumstances? The edict uh, left little room for confusion. A representative of the Overlord uh, must breach Ascension Hall before Kairos' Day of Swords and must assume, de and must assume death is the price of failure. We should... Uh, we should assist the disfavored in their siege preparations, as only the Legion should take the well fortified the well's fortified citadel. I wouldn't wager a wooden ring on the Scarlet Chorus impressing anyone but the vultures. What are your thoughts on me and my deeds? Any observations I have aside, your military record speaks for itself. You are Tonon's fate binder, and my opinion on the matter don't come uh, don't come into it one way or another. What do you think of our travel companions? I am more accustomed to traveling in a company of soldiers, so I am out of practice with judging the worth of civilians and miscreants. If you had anyone particular in mind, I will give them some thought. What do you think of Verse? I try not to. She is a force of chaos, an agent of the voices of Nerat. Taking her into confidence can only lead to ruin. And yet she is a capable fighter. For the time being I am confident that you can trust her to serve your interests and rely on her skills on the battlefield. She may even offer some useful perspective on the war. What do you think of Lantry? I don't know how many years he has walked the face of Terratus, but he, is clearly, he clearly knows more than he claims to, since he claims to know a great deal indeed. There is no limit to what he might be holding back. Let's talk of something of more immediate concern. Well, apparently there's nothing else. Uh, okay, so that just that just leaves. Uh, okay, Barrick's fear ability. He he also also doesn't like me, which is interesting. I would think, uh, I would have thought that a disfavored soldier would like me more than Verse. Uh, uh, let's talk to Lantry. Uh, Lantry uh, stops in his stride, in his stride, darting his hands about his bandolier and belt as he softly mounts off a mentor in mental inventory of his inks and quills. When at last assured of his possessions are in, uh, that his possessions are in place, he looks up at you with a smile. What might I do for you? Um, if you're going to be traveling with me, I need to know more about you. An understandable request. Let's see. Born in Sander, no kids. What few longings of fatherly love I've got left in my heart are satisfied by taking care of carrier birds. I learned my sigils and spells about 30 years back, and being able to defend myself has opened a life of field study and, and haven't grown tired of wandering just yet. I've written all, all, on all manners of subjects, magic, birds, language, geometry, but my main focus has been chronicling. I find there is no finer pursuit than recording the events of our times. They will, there will always be legends of what happened. Someone ought to be making note of the real thing. Aside from that, I don't know, I practice centering stance, uh, draw, por draw portraits, make my own inks, and have a sharp aversion to autobiography. I'm about as boring as watching coral grow. Uh, how did you wind up here in Vendrin's Well? When the Vellum Citadel was set aflame by Kairos' edict, I fled as fast as my knees would carry me. 
Every direction seemed like a bad idea, but heading, heading to Vendrin's well seemed the least suicidal option. Mind you, I was uh, laboring under the misconception that the Vendrin guard had surrendered and fighting in the valley had stopped. Uh, looking at his left arm and his right, he reads through the assorted notes and, uh, and inked across his skin. Oh, so he has like an actual journal <laughs> written on himself? Mm, ah yes, the seventh of sparring. That's where I cr when I crossed the mountains. That would be two days, three days after the Vendrin Guard chases on their surrender and claimed the citadel in the valley. The Vendrin Guard nabbed me sev and several other sages moving through the valley. The other sages were sympathetic to the Vendrin Guard. As for me, I just agreed uh, as to not get everyone killed. I think defying the Overlord is a really slow and stupid form of suicide. Um, tell me about your work with the Oathbreakers. The Vendrin Guard have several nobleborn noble in their ranks, and they know their letters. The problem is, they've come from houses scattered across the realms, each with, with their own private script. That's where the side sages and I come from. Between us, we're familiar with enough of the original scripts to translate and coordinate. But translating is child's play, so I might have helped out a bit more. The old citadel is at the center of the valley, uh, it's a crumbling affair, and there's no proper time for construction. Seemed a crime not to put my magic to work. Um, what did you learn of their plans in your time there? Uh, it won't surprise you to know that their strategy is largely non-existent. They cling to hope that their example will, ins will inspire others in the tears to come to the valley and join their cause. The recent inaction between the Archons has emboldened them. Some even think the Archons fear the Vengeance Guard. I'm sure they have it quite wrong. What else can you tell me about the Oathbreakers and their forces? The Vengeance Guard surrendered back in 429, and while a lot of them were conscripted into the Chorus, three of their leaders, Captains Ari, Matani and Florian, never turned themselves in. Instead, they hid in the valley, gathering up what resources they could until they could challenge the local garrison. At the highest count earlier in the year, they're numbered over 400, the ranks swollen by the soldiers of Haven and Azure that survived the war. They are a dying breed, these Oathbreakers. Most in the tears have finally come to realize that Kairos has already won. And before you ask, as a connoisseur of the inevitable, I have made my peace with the Overlord and bow to his might. Uh, so we have provided military aid to the Oathbreakers. When the Servant of the Archon of Justice asks me the question, I can't help but, I, but assume that it's, it's the antecedent to some sort of punishment. I can't deny that I assisted the Oathbreakers, but the alternative was to starve in a cell and maybe lose my head. I realize this is the, an offense to the Overlord, but it's not like I increased their odds of winning in any significant ways. Um, so you're an expert in fortifications? Hardly, uh, but I am an expert on preservation magics, the same cantrips we, we used at the School of in Inconquil to preserve our manuscripts against worms and decay are in principle as applicable to stone as they are to parchment, plus or minus some improvisation. Well, intent matters, you were doing what you needed to survive. Well, I trust my future actions will show that I mean to be of service and not a source of problems. How did you wind up a prisoner of the Scarlet Chorus? Mm, I had to send some missives and, me and that meant getting to a clearing where my terns and doves would find me. The patrol with me was ambushed by the Scarlet Chorus. I tried to flee but some of the youngers, uh, but, but some of the some youngster tackled me and well, out of one fire into another, that has been a running theme this year. Let's speak of something else. Uh, tell me about your magic. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't, li I don't much like to brag about about things like that. I'm not asking you to brag. I'm asking you to tell me what you can do. My major areas of focus have been preservation, concealment, and healing. The arts have served me well in my newfound life as a, a preemptive prey animal. The sages study all kinds of magic, 
uh, but as a chronicler, I wanted magic that would help me see more, achieve more, protect objects of historical value. Seeing as I feel like an old relic in need of some protections, uh, my skills suit me well. Can you teach me anything? Sure, I can, uh, I can tell you how to blend your own inks, train birds to, to, to think you're their mum, uh, how to turn a goat into parchment, but I'm pretty sure you would prefer to learn some magic. If the school of ink and quill still mattered, it may be more tight. Uh, I, I, I would have, I would have maybe be, been more tight-lipped. But if we're going to travel together, you should know how to mend wound wounds, especially if I'm killed. Mm, I know the edict still looms, but if you have a few hours, I could show you the basics of healing magic. Uh, at least how I learned it. Well, no time like the present. Um, rummaging through his satchels, the sage produces a long quill and cr a crumpled piece of parchment. With several qu seven quick strokes, he inks patterns on a page. Uh, we'll, start, we'll start with the first principles. When mending wounds and easing pain, we invoke the magic of the orphan midwife, Archon of Rebirth. By invoking her sigil, we channel her mastery, however briefly, through our hands. Now trace the sigil, following the lines in the order I sketched them. What can you tell me about this Archon of Rebirth? Uh, didn't realize you gave a care about your history. Well, the orphan midwife was born in 160 and bowed to Kairos in 201. They say where she walked, plants would sprout, the sick would grow vigorous, and also she would also send most folks into fits of rage and animals into heat. She sounds like quite a riot. Um, we know her magic by way of her first disciples, who migrated into tears in 222 to spread her wisdom. An act that happened to be illegal under Kairos's ro uh, law, for that and a host of other transgressions, the orphan midwife has been imprisoned for over a century, or so a story goes. Follow his instructions. And since this isn't your first cantrip, I'll move a little quickly, but I think you can ke keep up. Lantry walks you through a count countless repetition of signing the mystic sigil. For hours you wave your hand in the air for no effect, until at last you can sign the pattern in, the pattern in the air and feel a rush of power through your veins. Um, and so if you need to heal pain, as opposed to Persian infection, you would move your hand like so, but you know, that's enough for now, and I think the rest you can figure out on your own. Tell me about the sages. For hundreds of years, the sages have been devoted to the collection and preservation of knowledge, we are scholars, bookmakers, archivists and students of the mystic and mundane alike, the wisest of our guild, not, not that I truly belong in that category, are versed in sigils and spellcraft, or that's at, at least how it used to be, with the destruction of the Vellum Citadel, the sages have been scattered to the winds, uh, they were once more, th there were once more sages than I could name, many have died or have been taken prisoner by Kairos' forces. What do you know of the Vellum Citadel? Mm, he scowls, his writing hand becomes unusually still. I once felt a rush of pride at that name. Now it's a blight on our reputation. He clears his throat, uh, reasserting his smile. The Vellum Citadel was a beautiful sanctuary of parchment and ink. We had amassed knowledge from the Northern Empire to the coast of the Tears. It would take a score of lifetimes to learn all the citadel could teach you. But the sages in charge thought, thought themselves above Kairos' rules. The overlord learned that the sages were copying and spreading lies and forbidden knowledge. Kairos put, put an end to life at the citadel with his edict of fire. Mm, Lantry stops, putting a hand to his face. All that knowledge set aflame. And when we bind books, we bind them to last. Our most important tomes were warded against fire and other maladies. So many of the books remain intact, as shelf and floors melt away. I suppose it's still there if you want to brave the danger and certain death for it. Uh, it's a good reason they call it the Burning Library now. 
And who leads the school? I kept learning more names of those who died during the Edict of Fire, so my, op my information might be obsolete. But with Sage, uh, but with Sage Kravnik incinerated, Sage Renata would be the current provost. And if she dies, well, fuck. Thanks to all of the recent deaths, maybe I'll be next in line. Let's archive that away under things to worry about later. In truth, there is not much of a guild left to lead. Our library forces is ashes, uh, our membership is in, in disarray, and it doesn't help that we have something of a spotty reputation here in the Thiers. Fear of magic um, being something of a local specialty. What's your role in the guild? I'm one of the chief writers of the Chronicle. It's our attempts to record the truth, the truth of all things in their proper sequence. It's an ongoing life work of generations of sages. I have the honor of witnessing history and having a vantage point uh, be a matter of record. Uh, the, sa the sages would, know b would not bow to Kairos, yet you do. True, my peers can grasp many abstract concepts, but on the subject of hopeless wars, their stupidity rises to idiotic splendor. The sages believed themselves to be the mightiest magical guild in the tears, and they could even back that claim, but they mistook that for being, being a match for Kairos. How is it so many can study so much of history and learn so little? I've studied Kairos and the Archons in great detail, enough so that I am no longer blinded by fear of their magic, nor by envy of their special gifts. To my mind, it seems like nonsense to bow to a mere king or queen, where one could serve Kairos, the living embodiment of rulership. Uh, okay, are we done? Mm, indeed. I've got a finite appetite for discuss discussing myself, and I'm more than sated. Let's, uh, let us press onward. Mm, okay, that took a while. That took um, actually almost exactly an hour, so that's pretty much it for this episode. And that's all for this one, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!